Okay, let's talk about setting up Ubuntu Server as a DHCP server. Now, <clears throat> if you haven't watched any of my Ubuntu Server videos before, I'm just going to remind you real quick. I'm on a virtual machine. I'm on my school's network, and I have two IP addresses set up here. I have an IP address. I've got a DHCP address to get on the school's network to get to the Internet. But I also have a static address set up. And to get my DHCP server working, I'm going to need to use the static IP address. And I'm going to hop back and forth between those. And just to remind you, on my Ubuntu server, I'm using NetPlan. So I'm going to do forward slash etc forward slash NetPlan. I'm going to go there, and we're going to see that I've got a couple of backup files for my DHCP and for my static. Now, this is just a reminder. You probably, I mean, unless you're testing in a virtual environment, you're not going to have this. You might be working on a physical machine that has a permanent uh, address, so you're not going to have to worry about some of the things I'm doing. So just take what I'm doing and adopt it to your context. So I'm going to start by looking at my IP address and seeing that I am on my local network, which means I can install my software. And so it's going to be sudo apt install isc-dhcp Dash server, and that's going to install my DHCP server. Now I already have this installed, so it doesn't actually make any changes. Now I can look and see if it's working by doing the command sudo systemctl. So systemctl is my system control, and I want to look at the status of the isc-dhcp dash server. And that's going to tell me that it's failed. So that's not a big deal because when you install the software, it automatically loads the daemon and starts trying to run it. Now, that actually doesn't work because I haven't configured it yet. I haven't set up my system for it. So the fact that it's failed is not a big deal. Or if it's failed after I configured it, then that's something that I'm going to want to have a look at. But at the moment, I'm just fine with the fact that it's failed. So I'm going to hit Q to close that. And then I'm going to go to cd etc forward slash dhcp. And this is where all of my dhcp config files are. And right here, dhcpd, remember that's the dhcp daemon dot conf, that's my config file. So I'm going to nano. Now, I'm not going to be able to make any changes to this file, but that's okay. I just want to show you a couple of things with it dhcpd.conf and this is going to show me my config file notice down here bright warning hey this file is not readable that's fine so this is not just a config file this is also a great documentation file so anything with these hashes in front of it that turn blue these are cyan these are configuration or not configurations this is documentation and then these are my actual options and as you scroll down through here you're going to see that this actually gives you a lot of information and some good samples and good information that you might want to have access to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a backup of this file. And so this is my dhcpd.conf. So I want to copy that. And actually what I'm going to do, I'm not going to copy it. I'm going to move it. And then I'm going to create my own config file. But I don't want to overwrite this because I want to keep this for future reference. So I'm going to move. I'm going to have to sudo this. I'm going to move my dhcp. D, see if I can actually type today, dhcpd.conf, and I'm going to copy this or move this to dhcpd.conf.ori, and that's going to remind me that this is my original file. So now I've got my original file here, and now I can create a new config file. So I'm going to do that by typing sudo nano dhcpd.conf and that brings me up a new file that now I can start working with. Okay, so I'm going to start by setting some options here. Let me make sure I'm on the right screen. So it's going to be default-lease-time and I'm going to set that to 86,000 400, and then I'm going to end that line with a semicolon. Now that time is going to be in seconds, by the way. So I'm going to set my option of my subnet mask. Now, we're going to see two different options here, 
and I'm going to show you the difference between them. Uh, so this is going to be a subnet mask option for my entire server. I'm going to do an option broadcast address. I'm going to make this fit my um, network. But actually, let me real quick, I want to show you one other thing. I was going to do this a second ago, and I completely forgot to. So I'm going to do a control alt F2. And you've seen this before. This takes you to another uh, virtual uh, uh, virtual screen. And I'm going to go ahead and log in. And I need to reset my IP address. So I'm going to try this again. David and put in the right password. OK. Now, I forgot to reset my IP address. And I need this to go back to static. So I'm going to do cd forward slash etc forward slash netplan. And if you remember, here are my backup files. So I'm going to copy static.bak to zero zero and then I'm going to tab over to finish that. And that's actually not going to work because I have to sudo it. And then sudo netplan apply and that'll reset my IP address. So that now shows me that I've got my regular IP address. But the other thing I wanted to show you, and remember this what I just did you may not have to do. So remember to take what I'm doing and adapt it to your context. So the next thing I was going to do is we talked about that DHCP uh, d.config file as being a documentation file. So I'm going to cd forward slash etc forward slash DHCP. And I'm going to nano the dhcpd.conf.ori file. And this gives me my documentation. Now, this is actually really cool. I've got this in my second... Uh, virtual terminal. So it's Control Alt F1 takes me back to my first virtual terminal where I'm setting my options. Control Alt F2 will flip me back over here where I can view my documentation. Now I'm probably not going to do that, but I wanted to show that to you here. Control Alt F1, Control Alt F2. Um, when you're working on your own DHCP configuration, this lets you pull up that sample file. So let's hop back over to our primary one and we'll finish our configuration. I'm going to set my broadcast address at 192.168.1.255. And again, I'm going to end every line here with a semicolon. And then option, domain name, and I'm going to set Dalton.local as my domain name. And then this is going to be authoritative. And then I'm going to set my subnet. Now, anything that goes in here is going to be part of this subnet. So netmask of 255.255.255.0. And then I'm going to open curly bracket, go down to the next line and tab over. Now, the range is going to be the addresses that we're going to assign. I'm going to tell it to start assigning at 192.168.1.100 and assign through 192.168.1.240. Now, obviously, this is another one of those things that's going to have to match your network. We're going to set an option for routers, and that's going to be 192.168.1. And I'm going to do .1 for this one. And then I'm going to set my option domain name servers. And I'm going to set that at 192.168.1.10, which would be this thing. And then close curly brackets. So this right here is going to be options for the server. This right here is going to be options for the subnet. OK, now that I've got that, and by the way, you can move things around if you're doing uh, multiple subnets. You might want options down here instead of up here. But you're going to apply this. This is just an example. You're going to apply this to your context. So I'm going to save the file. And then I'm going to uh, close out. OK, now at this point, I want to see if my DHCP server is up and running. So I'm going to do sudo systemctl. And we're going to take a look at what it is. And we're going to try to start it. So this isn't going to start it. This is just looking at the status, isc dash dhcp dash server spell that right 
Okay, and this is showing that it failed because it couldn't find a config file. So now I'm going to start it again. I'm going to change my status to a start, and that should try to start the server. Now let me look at my status again, and we're going to see that it's active, running, and I'm getting responses. Now, I need to stop this right away because I don't want this running on my actual network. So I'm going to stop it, and then we're going to take a look at our status. Actually, before I do that, I want you to see this right here. Remember the system CTL will show you the state of your service and then recent log messages related to it. And so here we see a bunch of DHCP responses, which is why I wanted to stop it right away. So now I look at my status, and we see that it's loaded but inactive. Okay, so... I installed my DHCP server, I created a backup, so I had some good backup documentation, backup of my config file, created a new config file, set all of my options, and restarted my service. So my DHCP server now is working exactly the way I want it to, except that, you know, I'm on my school network, so I don't want it to actually be doing anything. So I've got it stopped. Now, if you're doing this on an isolated network, so you've got this hooked up to a couple of other devices that you're testing, great. If you're running an isolated VM where it's not running on your physical network, great. You can leave it open, you can test it, you can put machines on the network, you can pull DHCP addresses, you can make sure that everything's working. Things that I can't leave up and running here. So the last thing I'm going to do, and I'm going to show you how to do this because you might be running a situation similar where I am where you don't want this actually serving addresses on your local network. By the way, if you're doing this and it is serving addresses on your local network and it's not supposed to be your DHCP server, you have a really good chance of breaking your network. So I'm going to show you how to stop this. And the command is sudo systemctl, and we're going to disable the isc-dhcp-server, and that will stop it. So now it won't automatically restart. If you just stop it and reboot your computer, it will restart automatically when it comes up again. Okay, so there you go. An example of installing, configuring, and running a DHCP server on an Ubuntu server. Remember, you're going to take everything that I just did and you're going to adapt it for your context and that's how you're going to get your DHCP server functioning correctly.